Marissa is a beautiful young woman who's about to marry a wealthy and successful man named Chris. As she puts on her wedding gown, she explains that her marriage has 10 precious secrets that should not be revealed to the other half. Marissa accepts that these constraints must be followed, but she also understands that she'll be unable to resist the seventh secret, which is her secret desire for dirty games. The scene then shifts to a year later, and Marissa's life is going well since her husband is a powerful attorney in town who adores her. However, she dreams of becoming a great songwriter and singer one day. For the time being, Marissa sings in a small cafe and hopes that one day she'll be able to perform on bigger stages. Despite her great marriage, she believes her life to be suffocating since she's not achieved anything in her musical career. One day, Marissa arrives at her husband's workplace to bring some snacks. There, she meets her mother-in-law, who never misses a chance to mock her and remind her of how a good wife should behave. Not wanting to listen to her mother-in-law's taunts, Marissa goes to the park to write lyrics for her next song. She then considers applying for a singing competition, but believes she isn't capable enough. After pondering for a long time and failing to come up with anything good, Marissa decides to take a break. She then watches a dirty video in which a man smacks a girl dressed in a high school uniform. Moments later, a man named Slade walks by the park and notices Marissa watching adult videos. He then smiles and observes her with great curiosity, but just then his phone rings, startling Marissa and making her feel ashamed. Slade, on the other hand, isn't bothered about it and simply winks at her before walking away. After that, Marissa wanders across the park while calling her husband, asking him what he wants for dinner tonight. Meanwhile, two men nearby are drinking and talking about personal issues. Moments after, one of the men leaves to relieve himself, while the other notices Marissa from a distance. The man then approaches her and invites her to drink and hang out with him. When Marissa refuses him, he becomes hostile and tries to force her. Fortunately, Slade reappears at that moment and threatens the guy to leave Marissa alone. Just then, the other man also appears, and they both apologize and walk away from there. After that, Slade politely tells her not to stroll alone in this park, and that there must be another place for her to watch dirty videos. He inquires if she was the person in the video, which Marissa denies. He then puts his number into her phone and invites her to a place called the Corporal Club, promising her an exciting time there. That evening, while Marissa's in her bed, she imagines Slade carrying her on his shoulder and leading her into the forest, where he punishes and smacks her for not writing a song. Chris then enters the bedroom, and seeing that his wife is aroused, he assumes that she's dreaming about him. Chris then kisses her, and the two proceed to make love. After that, Marissa fantasizes about being smacked, which she hints to her husband again and again. However, he ignores all of these signs, as he's too beta to perform such behavior. The next morning, Marissa calls Slade and hangs up as soon as she hears the first ring. She then collects her confidence and calls him again, but when she hears Slade's voice, she hangs up again. Slade understands her doubts and knows he can persuade her, but he's now busy playing with his son. Just then, Marissa is visited by her cop sister, who gives her brochures promoting Marissa's singing show. Later, Marissa tries to find out more about the Corporal Club and searches the internet for details. Just then, Chris appears and informs her that he'll soon be able to become the state's youngest district attorney. His bosses quit, and Chris now has the support of powerful people to run for this post. He also tells Marissa that family is very important to him and that they should start thinking about having a baby. Marissa, on the other hand, claims that she's not yet ready for this since she wants to make music and gain some success before becoming a mother. But Chris says that they can't put their lives on hold while she chases her goal. His words offend Marissa deeply, and the two end up arguing with each other. Afterward, Marissa visits the corporal club where she meets a woman named Olivia. Marissa's terrified of going inside, but just then, Slade arrives and persuades her to set aside her fears, assuring her that she's in good hands. However, their talk is interrupted when Chris calls Marissa to apologize for their argument earlier. Next, when Slade opens the door, Marissa hears moaning sounds from the club, which frightens her even more, prompting her to run away. That evening, Marissa and her family go to a cafe where she gives a wonderful performance. After her show, her sister reminds her that she's 29 and that it's time to have a kid and start a family, but Marissa insists that she needs to focus on her career now. During their conversation, Marissa observes Slade in the distance. He then walks by stroking her shoulder, making her feel aroused and unable to hear what her sister's saying. The following morning, Marissa receives a phone call from Slade inviting her to the club that evening. She hesitates to join him initially, but accepts his invitation after some persuading. That evening, she decides to enter the club after removing her wedding ring. There, Marissa meets Olivia, who tells her that the Corporal is a nightclub for people with different fetishes and secret desires. They can have fun here and be themselves while keeping their true desires hidden from society. 
Olivia then introduces her to Valerie, who also works there and severely punishes the women to give them pleasure. Valerie informs her that this place has cost her to lose her husband and her career, but it's worth it for her. Moments after, Slade appears in the club and Marissa finds out that he's the owner of the place. To catch Marissa's attention, he picks a girl from the club and severely punishes her as Marissa watches. Soon, she feels embarrassed and decides to walk away from there. When she gets home, she spends some time with Chris and tries to get him to smack her. However, since he doesn't get her clues, Marissa loses control and shouts harshly at him. Days later, Slade returns to the place where Marissa's singing and admires her. Meanwhile, Olivia watches this from afar and becomes jealous. Frustrated by this, she returns to the club and requests that Valerie harshly spank her. When Marissa returns home, she thinks about Slade and pleasures herself in the bathtub. Later that night, Slade calls her and invites her to a party that Sunday where all the girls will be dressed as schoolgirls. Marissa has no reason not to trust him, so she promises that she'll be there on Saturday. On Saturday afternoon, Marissa visits her husband's relatives as his older sister is giving birth. Marissa tries to please them with a gift and is extremely mindful, but Chris's mother taunts her at every chance she gets. She mocks Marissa's work and calls her unemployed as she's nearly 30 and has no achievements. However, Chris's youngest sister supports and protects Marissa from these insults as she understands what it's like to be different and an outcast. Later, Chris's mother invites the guests to play a random game. She and her eldest daughter distribute flyers with flower images and ask the girls to look for some of them. The first person to accomplish so will earn $50 to help with their expenses. Everyone rushes around the place as soon as the game begins, except Marissa, who's not interested in all of this. Moments after, she notices Chris's mother and youngest sister arguing since the mother has a problem with her daughter's behavior and appearance. Realizing that she'll always be judged for what she wants, Marissa decides not to deny herself and decides to go to the corporal club. She's dressed like a schoolgirl and feels a little embarrassed, questioning whether she's doing the right thing. However, when she sees Slade, she gives in to his charm and he takes her to a room to have fun while Olivia looks at them jealously. He then closes the curtains and orders Marissa to kneel. He then lifts her skirt and begins smacking her hard, giving her pain and pleasure. After arriving home, Marissa smiles as she stares in the mirror at the red marks on her body. Later, she ignores her husband's texts and calls, who's away on a business trip. But when Slade texts her, she responds excitedly and thanks him for a lovely evening. Later, she finally dares to pursue her dreams and applies for the singing contest. On the other hand, Olivia arrives home and plays with her son, and it's revealed that she Slade's ex-wife and is still in love with him. The following morning, Chris returns home, worried that Marissa hasn't responded to his calls or texts. Marissa tries to tell him about her desire, but midway through their conversation, Chris assumes she's talking about her music and swears he'll do everything he can to support her. He then informs her that he's decided to announce his candidacy on their wedding anniversary. After that, Chris asks her where she was last night and Marissa lies to him, saying she was having dinner with her sister. On the other hand, Slade arrives to pick up his son and Olivia requests that he stop communicating with Marissa. Olivia claims that he treats Marissa differently than others and that she's aware of his feelings for her. But Slade denies such accusations and claims that she's just like everyone else. In response, Olivia reminds him that Marissa's husband is the future district attorney and can ruin Slade if he wants. However, Slade disregards her warnings and simply walks away from there. Afterward, Marissa meets with her sister and asks her to lie to Chris, saying that they had dinner the night before. But when her sister asks where she was, Marissa says she can't tell her right now. Her sister feels dissatisfied with Marissa's behavior, but she decides to help her in saving the marriage. Marissa then realizes she was wrong to deceive her caring and kind husband. Deciding to abandon her desires, she throws out her schoolgirl outfit and starts ignoring Slade's messages. Days later, on the day of their anniversary, Chris publicly announces his decision to run for district attorney during a press conference. Like many others, he promises to eliminate crime and do everything possible to help his native land develop. During his speech, Olivia arrives at the conference and sends Marissa the video of Slade spanking her. Marissa is shocked to see this, but she tries to keep her emotions in control in front of everyone. But Olivia continues to irritate her and even sends a message to Chris. Marissa becomes terrified and begins to panic, but it turns out that Olivia has only wished him luck. Just then, Olivia sends Marissa a message asking her to meet in the restroom. Upon reaching there, Olivia begins blackmailing her claiming she wants to control her and Slade's lives. Marissa claims it was a one-time thing and that nothing will happen between her and Slade, but Olivia doesn't believe her. She orders Marissa to continue attending the club, but only with her permission. Marissa's not ready for such conditions and tries to hide in the toilet stall. 
but Olivia continues her blackmail and even threatens to expose her in public. At this point, Marissa is in a desperate situation, so for the sake of her husband's career, Marissa agrees to Olivia's conditions. With this, Olivia kisses her and invites her to the club next Saturday, after which she departs. Then Marissa puts a smile on her face and walks over to her husband to pose before the press conference. And as the movie ends, Marissa narrates that she's never felt more terrified in her life, but at the same time, she's also never felt more alive.